In today's Leeds news, youth results, Luis Lopez linked, and Daniel Farquet press conference reaction. Hi folks, Chair here on the 16th of August with your Leeds United news. I'll be very honest with everybody, there's not an awful lot happening. There really isn't anything around to talk about pretty much, which is very unusual. Like, there's usually something, uh, but there's nothing. Literally, there's nothing floating around. Daniel Farkas' press conference is taking place shortly. The second half of this video will focus on that. However, what I will say is there's a lot of things I'd like to say about what's going on at Leeds at the moment in the 49er situation. Depending on what is said during that press conference will depend on what I say in the second half of this video. But the second half will be a little bit of a review, review but mostly my thoughts on what's going on at Leeds at the moment because there isn't a whole lot. I don't tend to give my opinions too much on this kind of stuff, especially on the channel, but I think it's worth talking about now because we're so close. We're two weeks away from the end of the transfer window and there's so little happening um, but we'll start off by going through the youth results the weekend I never covered them because I didn't do the video on Monday but I'll cover them now um, the under 18 started their campaign with a 6-2 win against Stoke City for um, we saw a hat-trick uh, sorry two goals from Finley Gorman a hat-trick from Leighton Brown and also a goal from Harvey Vincent as well gave Leeds that result in a 6-1 win um, also should be pointed out Finley Gorman is a 14 year old playing in the under 18 side and is the youngest ever Leeds player to score in an under-18 Premier League game. Um, so well done to him. 14 years of age, well, he'd be 15 soon, but 14 years of age scoring and playing for under-18s is, is an incredible step, so well done to him. Also, under-21 started their campaign with a 4-2 away win to Brighton. Uh, Luca Thomas with a hat-trick in that game, and Morton Spencer with the other goal as well. Luca Thomas started really, really well in a very much changed under-21 looking lineup in their new Premier League 2 table. Great start for them as well. Uh, moving on, talking about some links that Leeds have at the moment. There's really only one, and it's a pretty loose link. According to the Daily Record in Scotland, they are claiming that Leeds are interested in Luis Lopez from Aberdeen. The player himself had 16 league goals last season and 37 appearances for Aberdeen, uh, and is also being looked at apparently by Southampton, as well as Celtic and Rangers having a slight interest in the player as well. Um, Leeds have done well this year, enticing youth talent down from Scotland into Leeds. Whether they can do the same with, with uh, Luis Lopez is a different situation. He does come from the Benfica Academy as well from their B team and has had a, a few clubs in his youth career as well across Europe. So could be an interesting one to keep an eye on. 16 goals and 37 appearances in Scotland is good, but it's in Scotland. Um, it's a big difference in the championship. So... That's pretty much it and in terms of news. Um, as I said, I'll hold off on my opinion on stuff at the moment until after uh, Daniel Farkas press conference, which will take place shortly. So I'll take a quick pause and I'll see you back in two seconds for the review and thoughts on the current situation. All right, so Daniel Farkas press conference has just finished. We didn't get a huge amount of information, but some slight clarity on a couple of issues around Sinistera and Nanto's situation. Uh, the press conference started out just by Adam Pope saying to Farkett that their supporters are worried, which we all are, about the current situation, about the amount of players leaving and the lack of players coming in. And what Farkett said, said is they have been open and transparent throughout the whole process. He said, we did say it would be a bumpy start and we did say to see where we are at the end of August. He said, the closer that we edge to the window closing, the more in control leads become. Um, and he said the situation will ease up shortly. He mentioned that about this week as well. When asked about the Willie Nyonto and Luis Sinistera situation, he said um, it's too big a situation to talk about it at any length. But he said it's important to say that the non that Nanto, Costa and Sinistera are all training separately from the squad. He said they've been moved out of the dressing room for different reasons. He said on Willie Nyonto, we spoke about his issue at length and that's why he's out of the squad. Helder Costa, we covered it the other day in the news where we basically he said there's an agreement in place. He's not part of Leeds' plans and Leeds are not part of his plans. It's a very professional working environment between the two. They're both on the same page and a solution to that will happen. As I said, he's, he's, he's linked to going back to Saudi. That can happen after the UK window closes but Helder Costa will not be in Leeds' plans for this season and or and the game's coming up. On the Sinistera situation, he said it's a very different situation to Willie. He said there's no exit clauses in Willie's deal and we don't want to sell. On Sinistera, he said he does have some exit clauses, but there is an open legal question about some of them. And he said that um, he wants him out of the group currently until the league and situation has been sorted. He said he has done situations like this before at Norwich when he left two of their main players. Cantwell, I believe, was one of them out of the squad at the start because of distraction and attitude not being 
exactly where it wanted. He's not saying Sinister has a bad attitude here. What he's saying is there's a distraction there and he needs the player's focus, so he's removed the distraction. Um, but he said that they will have to wait until this situation, this legal situation is changed or affected. And he said, look, in the last few days, there is some movement, but we'll have to wait to see what the legal situation finishes up as. And in terms of the spirit in the camp and asked about what the mood is like this week, he said it's good. He said um, they've had they've shown a, a sense of character to come back against Cardiff, he said. And Shrewsbury, he said, obviously the weekend's game slightly different, but he said we have injuries returning now and he said the contract situations will be ironed out over the next couple of days and he said some incomings are expected and being worked on as well. He said that Leo Kelda has been out with a concussion currently um, and they have to work through concussion protocol there, but um, Sam Greenwood is back in full training and Joe Roden has had a full week's training, so that would increase his options for the weekend. And he said he is convinced by next week our situation will look much better better and um, asked about Sonny Perkins situation and is he available he said the player was sick he was ill but he is available but he said I pick players who convince me in training that they want to be here and they do the right things he said every player has an opportunity to get a spot on the team if they train well and train hard and impress me in training he said he would rather go with less players who have impressed him in training than a full squad just to make up numbers so that's why he hasn't put a full bench out at the weekend um, Perkins is available and is in contention but it will depend on how Perkins display Displays, uh, his sorry, Perkins displays in training this week go. Um, asked about the financial situation at the club and basically he's just pushed it aside and he said, it's not my topic to discuss. I'm here to talk about footballing t- situation. That's all I speak about. My job is sport. But he said um, that there's been um, a lot going on behind the scenes in terms of working on incomings. He said, we may have missed out on a few players that we wanted to bring in, but we are convinced that we're doing the right things behind the scenes and that there will be some Moves, he said he is confident of having a strong and competitive group after the window closes. Um, on the injuries, he said, sorry, on, on Cody Drama then situation, he said he was injured in preseason, which were limited his, how much he could get in, in Farkas' eye line. But he said um, he can't speak too much about who will be here at the end of August, but as of right now, Cody Drama is in his plans. He said he's been unlucky with injury and unlucky with trying to get a spot, but he said he has opportunities in training to keep impressing him. And when a spot becomes available in the team, he'll get his chance and he has to take it. He was asked then about 16 days left in the transfer window. Is it enough time to strengthen all the areas that he has previously said he wants to strengthen, which is every position on the pitch except goalkeeper? And what he said was, yes, there's enough time and they have a plan. He said, but it's not easy. And he said, we're working under time pressure and we're fully aware that we'd like more clarity, but we have to persevere with this. He said, late decisions will be made on players coming in and players going out. And he said, um, there's a possibility, you know, of the old saying of save the best to last. So we'll have to wait and see there. But he said, he's, everyone's aware of the situation. Everyone's aware of what they need and everyone's working to fix it. And he said, he expects, again, he said it again, by the end of August, I will be confident We'll have incomings, injuries back, contract situations sorted, and we'll be in the driving seat and in control of our destiny, and we'll have a competitive and good squad after that. Uh, Louis Sinister came up again. He said, just to point out that the situation between Sinister and Willie Nunto is different, so you can't compare the two. It's legal issues with Louis's contract. It's different to Willie's situation. Asked a bit more about the legal situation on Sinister's. He said, look, he was asked, were you told not to include Sinisteria in your squad because of these legal issues? And he said, look, I'm responsible for every decision in terms of sport and no one tells me what to do in that regard, who to play or who not to play at all. I make those decisions. He said, this has got nothing to do with names of players, salaries of players or transfer fees. They're not important to me. I look at the character of the individual. No one at the club has told me not to play anybody. Um, I said, He said that Luis... Um, hasn't was asked if Louis had asked to leave and he said I don't speak about conversations that I have in my office they remain between the four eyes in the room so his two eyes and the other person's two eyes and he said I don't speak about the conversations he said it's a different situation I need to create a trustful environment and players that tell me things in confidence need to know that it stays with me in confidence which is admirable you've got to say um, and then he basically said that you've got a lot on your plate right now have you been in this situation before and he said yeah it's a lot similar to what he had at Norwich after their relegation and he said he left two players out of his squad based on attitude and he said but they came back in after it was all sorted out and were a huge impact on the team and helping the team get promoted back to the Premier League so that's possible that could happen here as well I said again my opinion on what's going on the issue with me is communication and transparency that's the biggest issue um, we are hanging on to a potential busy last two weeks of the transfer window 
the aggressive comment that was made by Parag Marate at the start of the, when the takeover happened has really set the expectation level for the entire window. And it hasn't happened yet and it hasn't materialised yet. And that's not to say that it won't materialise and that it won't happen. But the problem we're here, we have is Leeds fans have trauma in this situation. We've been through this situation multiple times. We have seen windows come and go without any impact. We've seen midfield positions not be fixed on seasons when we needed them. The number nine situation still hasn't been resolved after years. Leeds have been through this with owner after owner after owner after owner. And at some point, this has to get resolved. So... What we're looking for here is communication, transparency, and a bit of clarity. Now, I know Leeds are fighting behind the scenes to sort this contract situation, but we don't know who's made the contract situation in the first place. There's rumours that, you know, but there's people's opinion that the 49ers would have overseen these contracts, as well as Radrazani and Orta. I'm, I'm not in that situation. I think they were very much on the outside, and these contract clauses have caught them by surprise a little bit. Um, but that's not to say that, that my opinion is true, or the other opinion is true. They're just opinions. We have no fact, because again, as I've been saying, there is nothing coming from the club. So in the absence of fact, as Kate over Leeds Bird Rand says, the void will be filled with conjecture. And that's what's happening. I'm speculating. Everyone is speculating. So the key thing for this, that for me, that has to happen is clarity is needed and it is needed quickly by Leeds. Something has to happen rapidly between now and this time next week. We cannot have a situation where we go back into the end of last week. You're looking at a position where Leeds are looking to strengthen every area of the park outside of goalkeeper. That is a minimum, then, of 10 signings if you're, to, if you're to get cover in every single position. Minimum of 10 signings. Leeds have averaged one signing every two weeks so far in this window. Can they do 16 or can they do 10 in 16 days? That remains to be seen. There's nothing coming out in regards to players coming in. We're not getting any detail from Farka around the players coming in or going out. He won't talk about it. He's not willing to talk about it. Nick Hammond isn't coming forward. Angus Kinnear hasn't said anything. Pragmarate has made no statements since the initial. I get that the 49ers work in silence. And mostly, and in, in general terms, I'm absolutely okay with that. And I have no problem with that at all. The issue is, in a situation where the amount of players have left Leeds, and the players we thought might be a little bit more loyal to Leeds, have all activated these ridiculous release clauses that are put in their contracts by Victor Orta, by Radrazani, and by whoever else was involved in that. This situation needs to get resolved quickly. Leeds fans need to know what's going on because... There's a possibility of an atmosphere on Friday night against West Brom that goes really toxic really quickly when it might not need to go toxic. All Leeds fans need to know is from the club that Daniel Farkas said that he's confident the squad will be competitive. But if we can get that information from the club, the club can come out and say something to us, you know, then we can be in a better situation to say, okay, we know this is going to be a last week of the window stuff and we're going to have to just grit our bear it until then. At least we know then. And then we can go and do it. But until we know that... We're going to assume nothing's happening because nothing has happened on the previous owners in similar situations. So, again, when they're not saying anything, opinion will run wild. And with opinion, that divides fan bases. And a divided fan base creates animosity, creates problems, creates hassle. And Friday night in Allen Road could end up being all of those things when a simple statement or a press release in the club or a press conference or something in the club just to say to the fans, relax, it's okay, we got this got a plan in place trust us stay with us till the end of the window we've got a plan without that we are assuming an awful lot good and bad and everything in the middle so until that can get sorted we're stuck in this limbo and for me that's the biggest problem it's not necessarily the outgoings it's not necessarily the incomings it's the lack of knowing what's going on and that needs to be resolved in some way we've had situations where owners who couldn't get off twitter or managers who just wouldn't shut up talking about everything that we didn't want to talk about to now being a void of silence. It's just nothing and nothing. So that's the situation that we have. It's a tricky one. I don't know how everyone else feels about it. I'm trying not to get wound up by it. I'm trying to stay reasonably positive. I'm just clinging to hope that the next two weeks do deliver something big and Leeds can do something even before Friday. If they can bring a couple of players in before the weekend, that will calm nerves. But you've got two days to bring somebody in before the game kicks off. And then you've got a week and a half. Leeds need to get a move on and they need to get a move on quickly and for me number one issue is just communication I'm happy to trust people and take them at their word once I know that there's a genuine plan in place I believe Daniel Farke I believe what he's saying I believe he's saying the right things he smiles when he says it which makes me believe that he, he knows more than we do it would just be great to hear something from the club on this so anyway folks that's going to be it for me today sorry about the lack of news not my fault really but that's what it is I'm running a news channel and there's no news so there you go um, Leeds United making it really hard for content creators to keep making content so hopefully this changes over the next couple of weeks the next couple of days especially and um, I'll see you tomorrow for 
some sort of Leeds news or reaction to this or something. We'll do something tomorrow. Have a great day. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.